In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I'm sorry we're a little bit late this morning. As you can see, hair and makeup took a little longer than usual. You know, as we come together to serve the Lord and to give him thanks for all that we have, let us remember that his first gift, the gift of mercy, is probably the most important. So it makes us worthy to celebrate these mysteries. Lord Jesus, you've shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you've given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us all. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. The assembly condemned Susanna to death, but Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they came, come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of the things with, with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel the elders said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age. Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent and freeing the guilty. Although the Lord says, the innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you, but not a daughter of Judah, but a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you also your head, for the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two, so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, blessing God who saves those who hope in him, they rose up against the two elders, for by their own words Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though Even I walk, walk in the dark, dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Near rest, beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He 
Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even, Even though, though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even, Even though, though I walk in the dark valley, I fear, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I take no pleasure in the death of a wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion that he may live. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, excuse me, Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground, and in response they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. And Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. This line of the psalmist this morning perhaps could be applied to all of us these days. Certainly, uh, this idea of the dark valley, this time of trial and tribulation, this time of social isolation and pandemic, are all times when we are being tested, tried. Indeed, we are in troubled times. But we rest assured in our faith and we must remain vigilant and constant in our knowledge that God is there caring for us in many different ways. We see that in both of the scriptures this morning, and despite the stories that are being used to share that good news, uh, we will see this image repeat over and over again this week in particular, in, especially in the gospel, as we will hear of the need to stay faithful to God even amidst growing uh, accusations and, um, uh, you know, even against growing uh, accusations and witnesses against us and or against Jesus. Today I will be going undergoing a little um, Moe's procedure to remove some skin cancer. Is why I made the joke earlier about hair and makeup taking longer today. Removing the beard was a necessary step this morning. I think sometimes that we often... Uh, try to go through these ritual things, uh, that is, uh, doing, the, doing the shaving, doing the preparing, and going about the daily chores of life, so that we don't focus on the difficult parts 
of the day that we are facing. But it's necessary. Necessary that we address them and that we do so boldly. As I preached yesterday, it's necessary for us to have faith in these difficult times and to remain faithful in the days to come. In this morning's gospel, as we hear, after Jesus has freed the woman from this trial against her, he says, neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. He intends that she will do her best not to sin. But certainly in this moment, what he has given her is his mercy, his love. Not by uh, simply uh, forbidding anyone to act against her, but by reminding each of us, each of us holding the stone, prepared to put this woman to death, that if we are without sin, by all means, go ahead and judge her. But if we are not without sin, then we are in no place to do such condemning. The rules that we have to govern and guide our way at life are meant to help us grow towards the Lord. They are not meant for us to put others down, to isolate them, or to otherwise condemn them. They are simply there so that we might know how God intended us to live. And when we fail to do that, the proper thing is not to abandon the person, but to give them the ability to rebuild, to be restored, to be, be reconciled to God and to us, so that we might have hope of moving forward together. This morning, in both readings, the first reading and the second, when we hear of Susanna who was condemned to death and this woman who was caught in adultery, we hear about accusations that are being made against them, perhaps especially in the case of Susanna, that are made falsely against her. And who knows the, the legitimacy of the accusations made against this particular woman facing Jesus. For we know their intent was really to find reason to condemn Jesus, not to put this woman to death. We must go through each of these days listening to the accusations made against Jesus. He, like the women, remained faithful to God. When he is put to death next week, his faithfulness is repaid in the resurrection. Our faithfulness will be repaid, not only in the love and mercy God gives us in this world, but the love he provides forever in the next. So we come before the Lord, asking his assistance with all of our needs. Pope Francis and all clergy and all members of the Church of God, that um, we may show mercy to those in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are elected to government positions, May God's justice be in their hearts as they make decisions in the best interest of all. According to God's ways, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who are suffering at this time, anybody who is sick, that the Lord's may healing touch may affect them and make them well, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all members of our parish community here at the cathedral, we will have peace and security in our homes and in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For our own salvation and that of all people of our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And this morning we offer special prayers for Laura Schisselbauer, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you are so good to us. You provide for all of our needs in all times. We ask you to hear the prayers we have spoken aloud, as well as those in the silence of our hearts that we may have the answer to our prayer according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray with me now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of our Lutheran and Apostolic Holy Church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance a joyful purity of heart through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled to the Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life as to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, and confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed upon us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue, 
who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now at the Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacrament, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you. Through Christ our Lord. 
Uh, perhaps you realize I'm a little bit distracted this morning. I'm not exactly certain I followed through on any of the points I made this morning. But what is important is that we are always consistent in our faith in Christ, who indeed will free us from all of our, uh, all of our struggles. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down and pray for God's blessing. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray, the people who call upon you, that living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ.